Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex. And a couple of years ago, we looked at a feature called Collections that allows you to organize your content for you and the people that you share your Plex server with. And they recently made some changes to Collections to make them easier to use and set up. So I thought we would basically redo the tutorial we did a couple of years ago and show you how Collections can be put together using the current interface. Now, before we get into this, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it is uploaded, and all of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see how collections work on Plex. Now, I thought what I would do is start at the very top level, which is showing you what a collection is. Right now, I have no collections in my Plex library, and we're going to make one for the Star Wars movies that I have on my server. Now, right now, I have it looking at everything in my library, but if you go up to the upper left-hand corner here, there's an option to filter things. And what I'm going to do is scroll down to the Advanced Filters option. What that will do is put up a little dialog box here where I can search by title. So I'm going to type in Star Wars. And now I've got every Star Wars movie that is on my Plex server. Now, if I click Save As over here right now, I can create a collection right out of the gate. But you have some other options, too, which we'll explore as we work our way through the review. But I'm going to start with Add to Collection here. And what this will do is allow me to create a collection called Star Wars. And when I click Create here, all of those movies now are in one spot. Now what you'll see here is that it is ordering them in a way that I may not want, right? Because chronologically these movies kind of work differently than the way they are currently sorted on screen. So for example, if I want The Phantom Menace to be over here, I can just drag it over and get episode two over here and episode three over here. And then Rogue One, of course, kind of takes place after Episode 3, and that leads into Star Wars, uh, The Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. One could argue that you could put Solo over here, too. So it's kind of you know hit or miss as to how you may want to organize this for yourself. But then we've got The Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, The Force Awakens. Uh, we've got uh, The Last Jedi, and then The Rise of Skywalker. So now all of my Star Wars movies here are organized the way that I want them to be organized. All right, now that we've created that collection, it will put it inside of the library alongside the individual films. So the individual films are in the library still, but now we've got the collection as a distinct item. So you can see we've got Rogue One up here on its own, but if I click on this icon, I get back to my collection here, which is pretty cool. Now you can create a collection in each of your libraries, and if you name the collection the same in another library, it will be accessible from all of the others if that collection is named the same. So for example, I created a collection in my TV shows called Star Wars, and as you can see here, I have access to Star Wars Rebels that resides in my TV shows library, uh, but because it's named the same as this movie one, I can get all of my Star Wars content in one spot. Now you might be asking, what's the difference between this and a playlist? Well, a collection is available to any user on the server, and a playlist is user specific. So if I just made a Star Wars playlist, only I could see it, but because I made this a collection, everybody who has access to my server can see it. So of course, here I am on my administrator account, I can move everything around, uh, but if I go over to a user who has access to my server and I click on the Collections tab here, they will see the collection that I created. I don't have to share this with them specifically. If they have access to the server and I've got a collection on that server, they will be able to see that. And this is a great way to curate content for people you might be sharing content with through your Plex server. Now, in addition to creating collections the way we just did manually, you can also create a smart collection. Let's take a look at that. All right, so we're back in my movies folder now, and what I want to do is make a collection of all of my 4K content so I can get at the higher resolution stuff in one place without having to create a second library. So what I'm gonna do is go back to our filters, and the resolution is under the advanced filters again, and instead of title, I'm going to go over to resolution, 
and I'm going to say is 4K, and now you can see that it's created a collection for me. Now, what I could do is save this as a static collection here, just like we did before, and again, that's the default if I were to click on Save As, but if I go over to Smart Collection, what this will do is create a collection that will dynamically update itself every time I add a new 4K movie to my server. So this way I don't have to keep updating it. It will update automatically whenever a film meets the criteria, which in this case is a 4K movie. The one problem though when you create a smart playlist is that you can't drag the films around to reorder them because it's being dynamically created every time you access it. Now at the time I'm recording this video, it will only organize the films alphabetically. So you can see 1917 here is first, and then it goes into the A's. It looks like at some point they're going to allow you to change the order, but right now this feature doesn't seem to be working. So if I switch it to release date here, everything stays the same. I even tried refreshing a little bit earlier. So it looks like there might be some more ordering options available to you in the smart playlist soon, but right now those things are not there. But you can go in and edit the search criteria. So if I click on the more button here and go to edit filter, uh, what you can do is add additional criteria or adjust your smart filter a little bit more. So for example, I'm going to say match all of the following. I'm going to add the uh, release date uh, after, let's say, 19, uh, 2000. So let's say 01, 01, 2000. And that will reduce our movies down a little bit. I can click Update Collection, and now I've got 23 movies instead of 45, but I didn't have to rebuild the entire collection. And then, of course, if I decide I don't want to be that restrictive, I can go in and just remove that update again, and now I've got my 45 movies back. So uh, pretty similar to how you might do a smart playlist, but this is available to not only you, but every user on your server, so you can find some different ways to curate content automatically without having to go in and update those collections every time you add something. Now you do have some additional things that you can tweak on these collections. I'm gonna click on the edit button here, and if I look at general, I can change the title, the sort title, which is how it will show up in my library. I can write a brief summary if I wanted to do something like that. Uh, for sharing purposes, you can add labels, which will help you uh, control who can see the collection if you want. You can change the poster image and the background image of something that you created yourself. That might be useful. And then in the advanced section here, you have some modes as to how this collection appears. And you've got three options. Uh, the first one here is called Hide Items in This Collection. Now, if I click on this and click Save, what this will do is hide all of the Star Wars movies from my library. So if we go down to the S's here, you're not gonna see any Star Wars other than the collection of Star Wars movies. So instead of having 11 different icons for 11 different Star Wars movies, I've got one icon that I can click on and then choose the Star Wars movie from the collection. And that might be something to help reduce the number of thumbnails you've got in your library, especially if you have a series of movies that you want to keep together. Uh, you can, of course, show the collection and the items, which is my library's default. The other thing you can do is show the movies, but hide the collection on your library. So if this is selected, you won't see this on the library screen, but you will see it in the collections tab. So you do have some ability to control how these collections work on a collection by collection basis. All right, one last thing to check out, and that is incorporating collections into your recommended screens. Now this is a Plex Pass feature, but if you are subscribed, what you can do is pull down that More menu again, and you're going to see some options here as to where the collection is visible on. And if I click on Home here and check off the mark, and check off Shared Users Home, and we'll do Library too for the heck of it, uh, what'll happen now is I can have this appear on my home screen when I log into Plex. Let's take a look at that. So from the home screen here, if we scroll down, we can see some of the algorithmically created options, but here is the Star Wars playlist that we added a few minutes ago, integrated in with the rest of the recommendations. Likewise, if I go over to Movies and click on the Recommended column here, uh, we will also see Star Wars here towards the bottom as we keep going there, there it is. Now, one of the things that you can do in the settings screen is adjust the order of all this stuff. Again, if you're a Plex Pass user, 
So let's take a look and see how we can move Star Wars up on the list a little higher. All right, so we're on the settings screen now, and I selected the server that I am currently working on, which is my MyCloud PR2100. If I go over to Manage down here and Libraries, uh, you'll see this screen pop up. And if I uh, click on Movies, uh, what you're going to see here is Star Wars. And what I can do is move Star Wars all the way up to the top. Uh, maybe I don't want my 4K thing to show up on there at all, so I can uncheck those. And now that we have Star Wars at the very top of the list, when we go back to our Movies Library, that collection now will be here at the very top when you're looking at the recommended tabs. So this will be on top of everything else that it's going to throw at you. So if you have some smart collections created, you can stick them right at the top and get to them in the recommended section. But of course, you can also access them in the collections section here. I have found that sometimes it takes a little bit of time for the front page recommended tab to update the collection order if you are setting the collection order manually. So if you take a look at my phone here, we've got that collection in the right spot here on my recommended tab above everything else, but the movies are ordered differently here than they are on the actual collection. Uh, this setting, by the way, will also apply to people that are getting access to your server remotely. Uh, so here you can see we're on the movie section in the recommended tab on the Plex user that is sharing my content. And they've got that Star Wars list above all of their other recommendations. And that's going to do it for this look at Plex collections. You do need a computer with a web browser to set these up through the Plex web app. But once they're set up, those collections will be accessible on just about any device that Plex supports. I want to thank Plex for their longstanding support here on the channel, and I want to thank all of you for watching, and let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Jim Callagher, Hot Sauce and Video Games, and Brian Parker. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.